Hello friends and welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm really glad you're here. My name is Becca. This channel is all about my love for spinning, knitting, weaving, crocheting, sewing, all the fiber things. I invite you to grab whatever project you have on the go and join me. Let's make some stuff. Today, as you can see by the table behind me, I want to talk about spindles. I have a lot of spindles. Some might say not, not really that many, um, but I have a lot of different kinds of spindles. And um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the different types of spindles, um, I thought I'd share my collection and uh, get you familiarized with some of the, the different options that are available. Um, I do have, as you might have seen, many different spinning wheels, and I spin with those most of the time, but I do have spindles, and I do like spinning with spindles. They're a really nice portable um, option, and if you follow spinners of Instagram, you might be um, used to seeing some of the perfectly smooth, perfectly even, perfectly uh, aligned spindles full of, of singles and yarn. Um, if that's your thing, absolutely that's great. Um, I don't bother with that, as you might have known from seeing some of my other videos. I really um, spin more for the relaxation and the process of it rather than worrying about um, trying to make it perfect. So, with that said, I also spin in a slightly different way than you might have seen other people spin. So let's just start with um, some of the first spindles that I ever, um, ever used. So I think I talked about this in one of my very early videos of how I got into spinning at all. Um, I had decided that I wanted to recycle some yarn from a thrifted sweater. And when I pulled the yarn out of the sweater, it was a cotton yarn, a six ply cotton yarn. And when I pulled it out and unraveled the sweater, the yarn had also completely untwisted. So instead of yarn, I really had um, a long piece of six cotton threads that were all sort of laying parallel to one another. And I had to figure out how to get those twisted up again into yarn. And so um, the solution for that was a spindle. And I looked around on the internet and saw some people suggesting that you could DIY one with things you can find at the craft store. And so I went to the craft store. So these are my very first spindles. They are wooden dowels with wooden toy car wheels glued on the ends and then a cup hook um, for the hook at the end. I made one that was a top whorl, so the whorl is at the top of the spindle, and then one that is a bottom whorl, so the whorl sits at the bottom. These are permanent whorls, they're glued on, and I used these for suspended spindling. And you are probably familiar with this, um, people often call it drop spinning. So you wrap the yarn around the hook, either with a half hitch or just wrapping it around and you let the um, you spin it and then let the um, yarn dangle on the uh, spindle suspend from the the yarn that you're making this is the same process whether you're using a bottom whorl or a top whorl um, it just is where the yarn comes around so for the top whorl, you just sort of um, find a good place around the side here, give it a spin, and again, the suspension of the spindle from the yarn that you're making. That was how I started. Um, I then made my first purchase of a spindle, which was this beautiful thing. Um, this is a top whorl suspended spindle with a little notch for where the yarn will go up on the cross on the side. The hook on this particular one is sort of bent offset so that when it's suspended 
the suspension point will actually be in the center and not off to the side. So it should spin more centrally along an axis. Um, it also has this beautiful turned um, shaft so that when you're putting your wrapping your yarn around in your cop that it will sort of grip on. It has um, some inlays of uh, some resin pieces in this starburst pattern and pink and gold which I thought was really pretty. Um, this was made by Viking Santa. Viking Santa is on Etsy and again all the links for where you can get the things that I have purchased um, are in the description. This is not a sponsored video. I purchased all of these with my own money. Um, some of them are no longer available unfortunately but many of the, the shops are still open and have um, other options if you can't um, find the exact one that I have. So suspended spindling with hooks. I then moved on to a different technique that I use most often now. And that technique is sometimes called grasped spinning. So I actually hold the spindle in my hand. Um, I don't have a hook on the end. I just have a tip, a pointed tip that I use to spin off the tip of the uh, spindle. And I'm going to show you how I do that because it's a little bit hard to describe um, how, how that's done, um, especially if you're really familiar with drop spinning or spindle, um, suspended spinning. So all of the rest of my spindles that I use are um, a plain shaft, plain tip, so they don't have a hook or a notch or anything in the end. Um, and I don't do a half hitch. I just sort of let the um, fiber come up off the tip and spin that way. So this is an example of one of my um, medieval spindle sticks. This one is obviously full of yarn. Um, and so the idea of a grasped spinning is that I am holding the spindle get a little bit of a lead here. I'm holding the spindle in my hand the entire time. This is fantastic for being able to sit down while I spin. Um, I sit on the sofa and spin um, and really the the length of the spin that I'm doing is um, or the length of the thread that I'm doing at any given time is essentially my arms width. Um, and so I pull that across and I spin that much and then I wind it on and do the same over and over and over again. Rather than a suspended approach where you really want to have a nice length um, of thread before you're, that is sus um, suspended. And so um, often people will stand up while they're doing that, which is great. Um, you can walk around with that. Um, I also walk around with my grasp spinning. So um, I think that is uh, sort of the, the main difference between how I spin now and how I started spinning um, and how a lot of other people you might see uh, spinning with a suspended spindle. So now I want to talk about the different kinds of spindles. I've talked already about the top whorl and bottom whorl and the um, hooked for suspended spindling versus the pointed plain tip for um, grasped spinning, also useful for um, supported spindling, where you have a spindle bowl or the floor, in the case of the large Navajo spindle behind me, um, that the spindle rests in and then you sort of um, just spin around that. So let's get into the different kinds of spindles. So I mentioned these. These are my medieval spindle sticks that are from Hershey Fiber Arts. They are a hardwood um, turned spindle. They have a bit of a swell in the middle, um, but not right in the center. It's sort of down at one end and they are pointed on both ends. And these spindles are intended to be used with a spindle whorl that is removable. So as you're spinning, you're adding more and more weight um, wrapping on your yarn. And so it becomes less necessary to have that um, flywheel that weight at the bottom to keep the yarn spinning. Um, this is why so many spindle whorls are found 
in archaeological digs all by themselves with no sticks because people would take them off, put them in their pockets, um, drop them on the ground, lose them. Um, whereas the sticks would have the yarn on them and so they were, um, they were kept uh, separate. So I have a variety of whorls that fit on these spindle sticks. One of the first ones that I got was this pewter reproduction of an archaeological find from England. It um, is a cast pewter, so it's got designs on both sides, sort of a starburst on one side and then um, dots and lines on the other. And those just sort of slip on and nestle up and then they aren't going to fall off. So it's a pressure fit. And then as that um, weight is there, it just allows the spindle to spin and spin and spin. And um, you can get a lot of work done this way. So this was my first spindle whorl, the pewter reproduction. Um, I then went to a um, store in South Dakota that sold all things uh, geological. And they had these amazing semi-precious stone donuts, they called them. So they are discs. Um, that are all polished up discs with a hole in the center and I thought those sure look like spindle whorls to me And so I thought I'm gonna get those in tiger's eye and this wonderful sort of druzy uh, I don't even remember what this is called. This is not a this is a created stone um, With this uh, gold that's gold, gold gold stone. This gold stone is not a naturally occurring thing So it is a uh, ground up um, I think pyrite and some other things and resin together um, I've got snowflake obsidian in sort of a, a larger version and so this is useful for um, heavier spinning, so spinning uh, heavier yarns or for plying. Um, so I have this larger one compared to this, the other ones. So the snowflake obsidian. I have um, howlite, which is cool, has this uh, asymmetric dark line on the center of it, off the center, and then a blue goldstone um, version. I also had a red tiger's eye, but I did drop that and it broke in two, so it's no longer useful as a spindle whorl. But just like with the pewter one, they slide onto the end, sort of pressure fit on there, and give that um, extra weight to allow the spindle to spin. To, similar to these uh, medieval style spindle sticks, I have three spindle sticks from the Dancing Goats that are um, what they call their Paleolithic versions. So it's really just the stick, sort of a dowel with a bit of a taper on the end. Again, no hook, just the point. The bottom point of the shaft is really sharp and so um, sharper than I would necessarily want it to be. I might sand that down, um, but these have a um, burned in pattern to them and they came with a um, ceramic spindle whorl and a matching spindle bowl. So this is the spindle whorl. It's again a flat disc with a hole in the center. It's smooth on one side and has sort of um, dots uh, pressed into the other side um, and it's painted up with um, mostly blue but then flecks of red and yellow and green all across it. Again it fits pressure fit on the end and then you can spin with it and then take the spindle off as you need to. Also swap it out across multiple spindles. So once you get one uh, spindle all filled up you can take your spindle whorl and move on to the next one, get that one all filled up, take the spindle whorl and move it on to the other one. And then you can ply from these multiple spindles without having to take the, the yarn off. And we'll do some of that later. I've got these two singles ready to ply and so I'll show you how that works. This is the spindle bowl for um, if you wanted to do supported spinning with this um, Neolithic or Paleolithic spindle whorl and spindle bowl. And so you just put the tip of the spindle into the bowl and 
allow it to sort of skate along the bottom of the bowl. This does spin for a really long time, as you can see. Um, I'm not grasping it, I'm just sort of resting it in the, the crook of my thumb and first finger um, to keep it from falling all over the place. But yeah, this is supported spindling. I have this spindle bowl, which was intended to be a spindle bowl. Um, I also used a just sort of a, a small dish, a small ceramic dish um, that I had used previously before I bought this um, for the same purpose. And you just sort of sit the spindle bowl on your lap um, and spin in front of you like this. It's uh, really easy to do, very convenient to do with your with uh, spinning from the tip in sort of the same way as the grass spinning, but it is um, sort of centrally located rather than when I'm uh, grasped, I can move my hands around a little bit more. So that is um, supported spinning. The next spindle I want to tell you about is another one from the Dancing Goats. This is another either grasped or supported spindle. This is a um, recreation of a spindle that was found on the Oseberg ship burial. It is in this sort of wormy, spalted um, wood, and this is an integrated whorl. So this whorl does not come off. It is always on the shaft here. Um, but the same way as the others, I can use this in a grasped spinning method. I can use it as a supported spinning or um, I believe uh, they also sell with uh, notches or hooks so you could do the half hitch version and do it as a um, suspended spindle. But this is my uh, spindle from the Dancing Goats, my Oseberg ship burial reproduction. And while we're on the topic of supported spinning, um, I also have this wonderful thing, which is a Russian style spindle. So the whorl is actually part of the spindle. It's a uh, one piece of wood. So the, the whorl doesn't come off. It's um, not super sharp on the tip, uh, but it does come to a point. And again, you're supposed to put it in a dish and spin with it um, supported. It has a smooth pointed tip and you spin from the tip. When you're putting the cop on, you're wrapping the yarn around, you want to not go beyond the shoulder. So if you think of the head and the neck and the shoulder, you don't want to put it down below the, the shoulder so that it's wrapping around the neck because that will slow it down. So you want to wrap your cop above the shoulder um, and you'll spin Usually they have several of these. So I have um, a really special purchase that I made. This is a new spindle, um, but these are very common because people had um, a whole uh, slew of them that they would, would um, keep because they would spin all of their singles and then do the plying so that their yarn would be very consistent. These spindles are often used for luxury fibers like cashmere, um, something that is very delicate to spin. So they're fairly lightweight, but by using this supported spindling, you're not putting too much tension on the yarn as you're making it. And so you end up with this lovely, light, fine um, yarn at the end of it. So I was able to get um, a several, I believe there are 14, I'd have to count them, um, 13 or 14 antique Bulgarian spindles that are very similar to this. They are in uh, a variety of different sizes, I'll show them to you in a moment, but that's because some of them you would do as your singles and then you'd have a larger version for plying. So these are the Bulgarian spindles. They are, um, again, antiques. They all have a uh, remnants of paint or uh, dye or color of some sort around. Uh, they're a bit rough. Some of them are quite capable of producing spinning. So this is an example of one that's used for singles. 
So it's a bit smaller. You can see this one next to it is one of the plying spindles, much larger, um, a little bit heavier. And just like any other spinning, you would spin your singles in one direction and then ply the other direction so that the twist um, comes together in a balanced way. So I have several of these. I have, um, I think, three of the larger ones, and then the rest are sort of um, different sizes, but um, all about the same for the smaller ones. So this was a very special, um, very special acquisition that I got. I found these on Etsy. I don't believe the seller has any more, but I'll go ahead and link to their shop as well. Um, you can find all sorts of things um, on Etsy and eBay if you're interested in antique fiber tools. And next I'd like to talk a little bit about some special spindles that were used for, or still are used, for cotton spinning. So in my previous video I shared with you my charka, which is a spinning wheel that's used for spinning cotton. The, um, the Aka from Tibet and the Takli from India are both spindles that are frequently used to spin cotton. So they spin really fast, um, which is what you need to spin the super short fibers of cotton. So we'll start talking about the Aka. The Aka is a small spindle. It has a point at one end, so it's used for suspended spindling. Um, very, very nicely. This particular one does have a notch cut in the top, but again, that's not completely necessary. You can also spin off the tip. The whorl of the Aka is sort of halfway between the top and the bottom, which is really interesting. But again, you fill up your cup sitting on top of the, the whorl. So it's not really a top whorl, not really a bottom whorl. This is a center whorl style. The Aka is from Tibet and is often used for cotton but also for luxury fibers um, so similar to the uh, Russian spindle um, the finer the fiber that you're the yarn that you're trying to make the lighter weight you want your spindle and this one is super super light um, that's the Aka Another spindle that's special for spinning cotton. You can see I've spun some green, natural green cotton on this one. This is the Takli. This is from India. And these are interesting because they're made of metal. So you have a metal shaft with a point at the end, not super sharp. And then the whorl is actually sometimes a real coin. This one is not, it's just a brass whorl. And this has a flattened section at the top of the shaft with a little hook on it. Um, so you can spin, support it in a, a spindle bowl. You can spin this suspended, um, although the cotton might break if you do that. Uh, but again, they spin really, really fast. These are much heavier than the Aka, but again, it's the, the weight of a coin and a thin metal shaft, so not super heavy. Uh, but two spindles that are specially um, made to spin cotton or super, um, super fine fibers like silk. And you may be familiar with Turkish spindles. So these are interesting um, in that they are multi-pieced spindles. Um, they come in lots of different sizes. I have two. Um, I have this mini glider from uh, Snyder, but they're all essentially the same um, construction. They have a central shaft, and then they have usually two arms. The shaft will come out of the center, and then the two arms come apart. And these come apart in a, a variety of different ways. This particular one has a notch cut in the center, and so one arm slides through, and the shaft goes through the center and pressure fits on and holds it together. And then you can spin with it. And in this one, we have little tiny brass weights in the end of the arms to make it spin a little faster. Um, and these are really interesting in how you wind the yarn on. So rather than winding up the shaft, wouldn't give you much space in this one. You actually wind around the arms and you make a center pull ball on the end of the Turkish spindle. So then you can just pull the shaft out, pull the arms out, and you have your yarn in a ball ready to go. 
which if you're gonna set the twist you still have to spin it or pull it into a skein and wash it um but you could just knit straight from the center pole wall so this was the first turkish spindle that i bought again this is uh, from Snyder. It's in something called Zebra Wood, so it's this really pretty wood. The second one I got is a little bit bigger, not a lot bigger. This is from Ed Jenkins, um, Jenkins Spindles, and it is made out of plum wood. Um, he marks on the underside, um, signs them, puts the limited edition because he only makes a few at a time. It's just him making them. Um, so they really are uh, special objects. But this one is made of plum wood. Um, similarly to the other one, the central shaft comes out and the two arms come apart. But they only come apart one direction because he makes this little notch on the one that slides in through the center. So it can't go any further um, and it can't slide out both ways. But then the shaft goes back in the center pressure fits on and then you spin away. Um, this one is again a little bit bigger so you can make a little larger um, ball of yarn. I often will make my singles with a smaller one because it's nice and light and then ply with the Jenkins because it's a little bit larger and I can end up with a slightly larger ball of yarn at the end. So those are my Turkish spindles. These come in multiple, multiple sizes. Um, some of them are actually quite large, the shaft of about a foot long. Um, but they're very interesting and very portable and I end up um, taking these as my travel projects quite often because you can just slip the, slip the shaft out of it, tuck it off, in, tuck it away into your bag um, and then you're ready to go. It's not going to be bulky and in the way and they are very light. So Turkish spindles. Finally I have two very special spindles that I am still trying to come to terms with how to use them so I'm gonna need a lot more work with these to really figure them out. The first one is the Basque Chotil. It's similar to the Turkish spindles and that the central shaft comes out and then you end up with a um, your yarn is wrapped around the bobbin um, and ready to go. It has a hook and sort of this bird beak looking uh, design. These are said to be ancient in design and still used. Um, again, I'm finding them, this very difficult to use because it, the, the um, bobbin, I guess we'll call it, um, at the bottom is very bulky and the hook sticks down quite far so it's hard for me to get the thing spinning without either the hook or the, the cross piece hitting my hand and stopping the twist. Um, it is obviously used for suspended spindling because you suspend it from the hook as you're spinning. Um, but I've seen people make lots of yarn with these and so I know it's possible I just haven't, um, I cer personally haven't mastered this one. But that is the Basque Chotil from the Basque region of Spain. And one final spindle to talk about today is the Navajo spindle. So this is, looks like a very large version of a, a regular spindle. Um, it is a made of wood, so it's a dowel uh, piece of wood with a integrated whorl of the same wood. Um, this one is uh, stained red. Um, but these are supported spindles and they sit on the ground next to you, which I know you aren't able to see. Um, again, I'm not very good at this, so I'm not going to, to demonstrate too much today, but you roll them across your leg and spin off the tip. Again, no hook. So in theory, this should be similar to how I do supported spindling with my smaller spindles. 
I've yet to master this technique. So once I do, um, I will definitely share this one with you in a, in a future video. But this is called a Navajo spindle uh, from the American Southwest. Uh, indigenous peoples um, spun largely wool with this. Um, what I have on here is um, wool from a sheep breed called Churro, which would have been um, a sheep breed that the indigenous peoples would have um, used. They raised churro sheep and used that for um, all of their textiles. So I'm very excited to have this um, beautiful spindle, uh, but yet to master the technique. I mean, you can see I've made some yarn on it, but not, not anything that I would consider to be uh, a very high quality. I need a lot of practice, but that is the Navajo spindle. So next I'd like to show you some of the spinning that I do um, in the grasped technique. Thank you. 
hope you've enjoyed this look at my spindle collection and I hope that it has inspired you to get a spindle of your own if you don't have one already and if you do have one pull it out and uh, give it a whirl and enjoy your spinning. Thanks so much for spending some of your creative time with me. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!